In the next section of the acid-base physiology chapter, we will discuss the final of the acid-base disorders, respiratory alkalosis. Respiratory alkalosis is caused by hyperventilation, which results in excessive loss of carbon dioxide. Hyperventilation can be caused by direct stimulation of the medullary respiratory center, hypoxemia, which stimulates peripheral chemoreceptors, or by mechanical ventilation. The causes of respiratory alkalosis are given in Table 7-7 on page 323 of the text. This is Table 7-7, giving the cause of respiratory alkalosis, examples, and associated comments. The arterial blood profile seen in respiratory alkalosis is an increased pH, a fall in the plasma bicarbonate concentration as compensation, and a fall in the PCO2 reflecting the primary disorder. The following sequence of events occurs in the generation of respiratory alkalosis to produce this blood profile. First is the loss of carbon dioxide. Hyperventilation causes an excessive loss of carbon dioxide and a decrease in PCO2. The decreased PCO2 is the primary disturbance in respiratory alkalosis, and as predicted by the henderson hosbach equation, causes an increase in pH. The decreased PCO2 by mass action also causes a decreased concentration of bicarbonate. The next step is buffering. Buffering occurs exclusively in the intracellular fluid, once again particularly in red blood cells. In this case, carbon dioxide leaves the cells and intracellular pH increases. The next step would be respiratory compensation, however, this also does not occur. As with respiratory acidosis, there is no respiratory compensation for respiratory alkalosis, since abnormal respirations are the cause of the disorder. There is, however, renal compensation. Renal compensation for respiratory alkalosis consists of decreased excretion of hydrogen as citratable acid and ammonium and decreased synthesis and reabsorption of new bicarbonate. Decreased reabsorption of bicarbonate decreases the bicarbonate concentration even further than did the effect of mass action alone. Once again, the henderson hasselbalch equation can be used to understand why the decreased bicarbonate concentration is a compensatory response. pH is equal to the pK plus the log of the concentration ratio of bicarbonate to PCO2. When the primary disturbance is a fall in PCO2, a fall in the bicarbonate concentration will decrease the pH further. In acute respiratory alkalosis, renal compensation has not yet occurred. The pH remains quite high. There is a decrease in the denominator of the henderson hasselbalch equation, but little decrease in the numerator. In contrast, in chronic respiratory alkalosis, renal compensation is occurring. This will further decrease the blood bicarbonate concentration and tend to normalize both the ratio of bicarbonate to carbon dioxide and the pH. As in respiratory acidosis, the difference between acute and chronic respiratory alkalosis lies in renal compensation. Again, based on the absence or presence of renal compensation, the renal rules give different calculations for the expected change in bicarbonate concentration in acute and chronic respiratory alkalosis. Once again, see Table 7-3. Let's walk through a sample problem. The patient has the following arterial blood values. pH of 7.33, bicarbonate of 36, PCO2 of 70. What is the patient's acid base disorder? Is it acute or chronic? And are the blood values consistent with a simple or mixed acid base disorder? With a pH of 7.33, the patient is actually acidemic. The bicarbonate concentration and the PCO2 are consistent with respiratory acidosis rather than metabolic acidosis. The PCO2 is elevated due to primary hypoventilation. If it was metabolic acidosis, the PCO2 would be decreased due to compensatory hyperventilation. Whether the respiratory acidosis is acute or chronic can be determined by comparing the patient's values with the ranges on the acid base map. Using the acid base map, it can be concluded the patient has chronic 
respiratory acidosis. The rules of thumb also can be used to distinguish between acute and chronic respiratory acidosis by calculating the predicted change in bicarbonate for the change in PCO2. The patient's PCO2 is 70 mm of mercury, which is 30 mm of mercury above normal. The compensatory response is an increased bicarbonate concentration. The patient's bicarbonate is 36 mg per liter, which is 12 mg per liter above normal. The change in bicarbonate relative to the change in PCO2 is therefore 12 divided by 30, or 0.4 mg per liter per mg of mercury. The compensation is exactly as predicted by the rules of thumb for chronic respiratory acidosis. It can be thus concluded that the patient has a simple chronic respiratory acidosis with the expected level of renal compensation. This concludes this section.